Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the seventh edition of the Vero SME Insurance Index. My name is Anthony Pagano, and I'm the head of commercial intermediaries for Vero and host for today's seminar. The insurance market is going through a significant period of change, whether it be customers, brokers, or insurers. One thing is for certain change is the only constant. I recall a piece of advice I was once given in which a person said to me, What got you here today may not get you there tomorrow. Now, if you're in today's competitive environment, this still stands true. The fact that you are here today, listening to this webinar, indicates to me your desire to stay connected with your clients and gain new insights in today's SME. For the last seven years, Vera has made considerable investments into better understanding SME behaviours, researching the trends and emerging issues, and now being our broker partners to better connect with their clients, their existing or new clientele. Every year we gather feedback from our broker community to keep the SME index of relevance and of value, and we thank those brokers who have taken the time to share their opinions. As a result of this feedback, we have made some key changes in this year's approach. We have for the first time a new webinar format, uh, which you are seeing today, and to make sure that you know, we're having this presentation accessible to as many people as possible. We've added some new questions uh, and data that delve into the complexity of broker usage. Of course, throughout the year, Vera will continue to support you uh, with new information and tools to ensure we maximise the learning that the index provides. Well, to that end, let's kick off the 2018 Vera SMA Insurance Index. And here to present this year's finding is none other than Kylie McNamara from Brand Matters. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll present to you Kylie McNamara. Thank you so much, Anthony, and welcome everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar for the seventh edition of the Vero SME Insurance Index. As Anthony said, we have seen so many changes over the last seven years that we've been talking to SMEs, and we've really seen the way SMEs are increasingly embracing technology to run many facets of their business. And so inspired by that, We've turned to technology as well this year to bring you our first webinars. We're really excited to give this opportunity to present to so many of you around the country. Thank you so much for registering. We really hope you find the new format useful and interesting. As Anthony also said, we've, we've really seen a huge increase in the complexity of the behaviour and the way that SMEs buy insurance over the last seven years of doing this index. And this year, we've looked at alternative ways of measuring this so we can really get into some of the nuance of how they're buying their insurance, everything from how they're reviewing their insurance, what channels they're using, and how they go about finding and referring and getting information. And we're going to be going into all of those things today. We really hope that this information is useful for you as you go and make plans for your brokerage over the next year. Before we get into the content for this for this webinar, though, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping for you. You're all currently on mute at the moment for sound quality purposes, but we do want to keep communicating with you. The box you can see on the right of your screen, the text box, is your way of communicating with us. If you're having tech problems at all, please type the problem into the box. We have a tech team on standby here, and hopefully they should be able to talk you through any challenges that you're having with the technology. We are also really keen to get your questions during this session. We want this to be as interactive as possible, and you asking questions as they come up is a really great way for us to share more information with you, for other people in the audience to benefit from the information that you ask, and also for us to understand what's of interest and what's clear and what's cl not clear. So please don't be shy. We really encourage you to ask questions. We'll get you to type them in the text box on the right of your screen. Um, we'll be stopping at a few stages during the presentation today to go through your questions. So we really look forward to hearing from you. Just on those questions, I think just people mm. understand they are anonymous. So yes. uh, when you do come through, just um, you know they will be uh, kept in, in um, yeah, anonymous, so there will be no need for if people are concerned uh, that their questions will be laid back to them personally. Absolutely, and we'll be compiling the questions that come through to that end we may not have time to answer all of the questions that you have if we aren't able to get to all of the questions we will be compiling a list of all of the questions that have been typed in the answers and distributing over the next couple of weeks so if we don't answer your question in person please don't think we're ignoring you it's just a question of time but we will definitely get an answer out to you also, some people might have some very specific data questions that we don't have in front of us today. If that's the case, we'll definitely get back to you with the data. So let's kick in then to today's presentation. Um, we're going off the screen now and you should just be seeing a PowerPoint 
slide on the screen. Um, so you'll be hearing my voice and you'll see Anthony and I again at the end of the webinar. But let's have a look now at why we're actually here and doing this process. And we have three main purposes for being here today. The first is to really provide you with a great in-depth understanding of SMEs. We know they're a very important audience for brokerages and we're aiming to give you some understanding of what makes them tick. What do they think about insurance? How do they manage their insurance needs? And most importantly, what do they think about brokers? But not only do we want to provide you with information, we also really want to provide you with practical solutions. So you can actually use these insights to um, help your clients and help your brokerages succeed as we go forward. And then finally, as we've just mentioned, this is a great opportunity to be interactive and answer some of your questions. So as we've said, please keep the questions coming in. Um, we will do our best to answer all of those questions and please don't be shy. No name is attached to them. No one else can see your chat box. So um, please send those questions through and we'll be ask, answering them at the end of each section. So this year we'll be presenting the index in 2018 in a series of stages as we did last year based on some great feedback we've had from people in the broking community over the years. We have decided rather than just doing one burst of information, we're going to be releasing the information over the year, throughout the course of the year. Today will be the main burst of information where we'll give you some um, in-depth findings about how broker usage is going on. Um, throughout the year, we'll also be giving you more information as well, and you will also be seeing tools coming through from the team. So. Some of the topics we'll cover today is how do SMEs review their insurance, how's broker usage changing, and what is the role of referrals. And then in coming months, we'll be doing an in-depth um, dive into SMEs under 45 years and find out what's important to them and how they differ. And we've got a number of short, sharp content series to assist you with understanding the findings in more detail. So before we get into the information, I just wanted to explain to you how we get the research um, so you understand the methodology and um, the way we get to this information. But before I do that, I should just explain what we mean by an SME because there's a number of definitions of SMEs around there floating out there. And as with previous years, for this research, we've defined an SME as a business with between one and 200 employees, which is the same way that the Australian Bureau of Statistics defines SMEs and it's the most widely used definition. The Bureau of Statistics also identify three size divisions within that. They talk about micro businesses which have between one and four people in the business, small businesses who have between five and 19 employees and medium businesses have between two, 20 and 200 employees. And you'll see us refer to this quite a bit through the presentation because we found that it's one of the most common distinguishes of behaviour between groups is business size. So what did we actually do? We've used the same format for the research this year as we have in previous years. We start off with a very large scale quantitative survey which is conducted online so it's fully national um, and it's done in September of every year. We keep the timings consistent from year to year to make sure we can really accurately compare without any seasonal effects. This year we spoke to 1,619 SMEs, which is a really robust sample, which means we're able to have a fair degree of confidence that the opinions we are getting from this group of people is representative of the wider community of SMEs as a whole. As in previous years, we followed this survey up with some in-depth interviews, which allow us to really get behind the numbers and understand the stories that sit with eight selected SMEs, so we can really understand what they're thinking. We choose these SMEs deliberately to be either small or medium sized rather than micros because we know that those people are more relevant to a broking audience. And each year we film those interviews and create videos so you can hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak, about what they're thinking about their insurance. So you'll be seeing a number of videos throughout today's presentation where you'll get to hear what these people are really thinking. The topics we cover are broadly similar each year. About 70% of the questionnaire stays the same each year so we can compare year on year. But each year we also introduce new questions and replace questions so we can make sure that we keep up with stories so that if we get feedback from you about things you want to know about, we can keep evolving the questionnaire. This year we covered a number of consistent themes and also some new ones. 
we asked a lot of questions about what keeps SMEs up at night. For the first time, we looked at what prompts them to review their insurance arrangements. We look at how they buy their insurance. We look at attitudes towards insurance and brokers, how they feel about referral. We talked about more this year than we have in the past, and also decision-making and key influences. One of the key questions that were always asked each year with the index is how are things different in my state? And just wanted to draw attention to this at the beginning of the presentation, because while we do have very comprehensive data for each of the states, we've always reported at a national, re at a national level. And the main reason for this is simply the fact that we find very few differences between the states. Um, each year we do look in quite a lot of detail. We have good sample sizes in each of the state. But there seems to be very little difference in the key attitudes between any of the states. We're also able to compare results between metropolitan and regional areas. And again, the differences we're seeing here are very small and very isolated. So you can feel confident when you see the trends that are reported here, they're going to be relevant regardless of your location. So let's get into the findings now. And as I said, we've got three topics we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about how SMEs review their insurance. We'll talk about broker usage and how that's changing. And we'll talk about the role of referrals. So let's go to finding one, which is a new question this year, which is when are SMEs actually, what's triggering them to review their insurance? And what we're finding is that industry and business changes are prompting SMEs to review their insurance on a regular basis. So if we look at the next slide, this question is based on a, what are the triggers that prompt you to have a look at your insurance arrangements? And people had a large number of options to choose from. They grouped into four key themes. And the good news that came out of this is that less than one in five say that I just said and forget my insurance. So only a small group are saying things like, oh, I never look at my insurance. I can't remember when I last reviewed it. I don't really know when I review it. So that would suggest that there's only a small group who are fairly unengaged and not reviewing their insurance on a regular basis. The most common trigger for people was some form of standard review, whether that was an annual review when they get their renewal notices, whether that's something that's prompted by their broker or maybe someone like an accountant. About 60% are saying that they do some sort of annual review. We found that insurance events are a pretty important reason for some SMEs to look at their insurance arrangements, which could be something like, I've had a major claim, I've had a major increase in the premiums I'm paying, for about 37% of people, that's a reason to actually take a look at how they do their insurance overall. The final reason, and I think one that's actually probably the most interesting of all, is we have about a quarter of SMEs saying that they're reviewing their insurance when they make significant changes to their business, which could be something like major, making a major investment, buying new equipment, bringing on new staff, um, changing their business model, things like that. And I think that's a particularly interesting insight because what it says is that we're going from a set and forget mindset to SMEs who are increasingly want to be involved and quite proactive in terms of how they manage their insurance, rather than it be something like, I just renew it and it ticks over. They're actually saying, actually, my business is changing. I need to be thinking about how I manage my insurance. And where that becomes interesting is where we look at a couple of key groups. For example, if we look at the younger SMEs, those who are under 45, we found that they are considerably more likely to re review their insurance when changes are happening in their business. So whereas only about 26% of the total SME population say they review their insurance due to changes in their business, this jumps up to 37% for the under 45s, suggesting that this group is far more proactive in managing their insurance as their business changes. And also perhaps setting the scene as this group becomes a bigger and bigger part of the overall SME population, it suggests that being more proactive and thinking about insurance as business changes is going to become a more prominent feature in the future. We see a similar story when we look at size of business and we find that business changes become an even bigger trigger the larger the SME. So we have about 23% of the micro businesses say they review their insurance when their business changes. This jumps to 45% for small businesses and 62% for those medium sized business, which again really highlights the importance for brokers to be aware when 
clients, particularly at that larger end of the scale, are making changes to their business. So brokers can be there to assist and advise when their clients are actually looking at their insurance arrangements. And this is about thinking about checking in more regularly than perhaps the traditional approach of a once yearly check-in. So as I said at the beginning, we have interviewed these and filmed a number of SMEs and we've built them into videos for each of our findings. In this video, you're going to meet a number of SMEs we interviewed and hear what they have to say about reviewing their insurance arrangements. Now, before we play this video, just a bit of a technical note. Obviously, videos have a much bigger file size than a PowerPoint slide, so there's a risk that one or two of you may experience a couple of technical hitches during the video. You might get some buffering or perhaps your sound drops out. I really hope this doesn't happen, but if it does, unfortunately, it's a bit out of our control. It's just due to internet connection speeds. Um, if you do have difficulties, please hold on and you should return to normal once the video is finished and the next video may work fine for you. Um, if you don't get to see the video, the videos are going to be on the vero.com.au website, so you'll be able to view them on that website after the webinar today. So let's have a on an annual basis when the renewal of the policy is required? I review my insurance once a year. I set aside some time and deal with it all. When it's up for renewal, I, I will compare it. This past year I did look at it a little bit more intently and I changed providers for that reason. As our inventory grows, I should be telling our broker that's happening. Put an hour aside, think, all right, how many barrels do we have? Oh, we've now bought the ute, we've now bought the forklift. Are we buying any more specialised equipment? We've kind of looked at changing a little bit of the direction of the business. And at that point in time, you would review it with your broker and give them a heads up as to what you're doing and how that could impact on what we would need to cover. Broker gives us a call and saying, look, it's your insurance is due, can I come and see you? He then asks us what we want, he looks at our turnover, we discuss how we do transport, how much we have in stock, if we have got new machines, new cars and so on. Our broker would probably ring us up and ask us what has changed in your business, what is changing over the next 12 months. So to wrap up this section, just a few things for brokers to keep in mind from this part of the presentation. The first is that regular reviews are really important. We know that most SMEs are doing regular reviews, so ensure that you have regular reviews set up based on your client's typical planning cycles. But also try and understand when they're making big changes in their business, especially if they're younger or if they're small or medium-sized businesses to ensure that you're there to provide necessary advice at a time when they're most likely to be reviewing their insurance arrangements. And finally, if they are going through an insurance event, whether that's due to a major claim or whether they've had increased premiums, it's an important time to really provide support and have a conversation with them. So before we move on to the next section, let's have a look at some of the questions that have been coming, coming through. And thank you very much to everyone who's been asking them. Anthony's been monitoring those questions and is going to share some of them with me. Excellent, thanks Carl. So one of the questions that come through was, do broker clients tend to review their insurance more regularly than direct buyers? Yeah, oh, look, great question and definitely. Um, we do find that broker clients are reviewing their question, the, reviewing their clients Sorry, broker clients are reviewing their insurance arrangements more regularly than those who don't go direct. So to me, that's a real evidence of the expertise and diligence that a broker is bringing to the, the relationship. Okay, great. Another question that's come through is, what type of business never reviews their insurance arrangements? Um, look, I think the good news there is that by, in the main, they do tend to be the smaller businesses, the micro businesses who potentially have less sophisticated arrangements. Potentially, they're just getting things like public liability so they can be on a work site. So it's mostly the less sophisticated clients who are setting and forgetting. Okay. And there's time for one more. Um, 
why are younger businesses the most likely to review their insurance when they make business changes? Um, look, it's a, it's a good question and we don't have any data for this, but I think there's a couple of things that I think drive that. I think one is that we find many younger people tend to be in growth businesses, so they are more likely to be making regular purchases. Like you heard Chris the Brewer say, they're growing pretty fast, so his inventory is increasing month by month, so he constantly needs to keep on top of it. But I think there's also an attitudinal thing going on that we know younger SMEs do want to get more involved. They are more proactive in managing their insurance. So I think that that's made them more inclined to um, review their insurance more regularly. Okay, great. Right. Well, look, thank you so much to everyone for sending in those um, questions so far. Please do keep them coming. We're going to have two more Q&A sessions for the rest of them. And just as a reminder, don't feel too... Um, don't feel too shy about asking a question, your name won't be associated with the question. People can't see questions people are answering in their own chat boxes, so please send them through. And now let's head on to the next section, which is about a really important issue to many of them, and that's broker usage and how is that changing. And what we have found by taking, we've taken a different look at how we've measured this this year, and we found that insurance purchase behaviour is more complex than we may think. So traditionally, the way we have asked the question is we've said, look, for the last insurance policy you purchased for your business, how did you buy that? Did you buy it direct? Did you buy it through a broker? Or did you use a mix of channel? Um, and that's, that's a very typical research way of finding out usage. And we've used that for a number of years. And we've been seeing, seeing a decline in that figure. It's gone from 44% a few years ago. Last year is at 33 and it's increased slightly this year to 37%. Now, good to see it moving in a positive direction. It's probably not necessarily statistically significant at that level, but certainly it's moving. But we've thought a lot about this question. It's something that we've had a lot of conversations about over the last year. And I know that this is an area where some of you have had concerns. So we've had a look at this question and said, Look, it suggests that broker use is binary. It's black or white. You either use a broker or you don't use a broker. But is this actually the case? And to really explore this a bit further and get a, a more nuanced view that's actually more reflective of reality, we've asked a few new questions and we're going to take you through these now. And the first question we asked was, are you using a broker less than you used to? And what we found from this is that around a third of SMEs say yes, we are using a broker less. And so we then followed up with the question, well, why are you using a broker less? And what we found for this one is that the reasons for using a broker less really fall into four main buckets. Um, by far and away, the biggest factor is ease and convenience. And there you have people saying things like, look, it's just easier to look after it myself. It's easy enough. I can do it on my own. There's no problem with it. So for 56% of people, this is a really key reason for not using a broker. And it's a really important um, finding, I think, for brokerages because it goes to how can brokerages make it as easy as possible for SMEs to work with you and engage with you. And it could be something as simple about being available at the right time or about finding processes and ways of doing admin that feel just as easy as just getting it online and doing it myself. The next factor is the one that we often talk about, and that's one of price. Um, we have 45% of people saying that price is a factor and a reason to use their insurance less. We have another 39% who say they've got some concern, whether that's about poor service or advice they've just received. And then an interesting group in the bottom, we have just over a third saying that I just prefer to do things online these days, so therefore I go direct, which I think really highlights the opportunity for brokerages to look at at least some ways of interacting with clients online because there's a group and potentially a reasonably large group who really just prefer to interact that way. And look, a quick um, comment on this chart and one I should have mentioned earlier as well, those of you who are very quick with the maths might have noticed that those numbers don't add up to 100. It's not that our maths is wrong, it's just this was a multiple choice. People could choose multiple options. So that's why those numbers add up to more than 100. So the other new question that we then asked is, well, in order to get a sense of that mixed usage between broking and direct, we asked them, so for all of the insurance policies you've either bought or renewed for your business in the last 12 months, 
approximately what percentage have you bought through a broker? And you can see the results on the screen now where the red, 31% um, are people who put 0%. They don't use a broker for anything. The pale grey at the other end is those who use a broker for almost everything, between 90 and 100%. And then we have a big group in, in the middle, the biggest group, um, who we've called mixed users, who are using a broker for some but not all of their insurance. And that represents 42% of the total sample. However, that picture becomes... Um, more complex when we look at other groups. So if we look at business size, what we find is that the larger the business, the more likely they are to use a mix of purchase channels. So if we look at micro businesses, about 40% of them say they use a mix of broker and direct. That increases to 58% for the small businesses and then jumps all the way up to 71% for the much larger medium-sized businesses. And as you'll see in the videos coming up, we see a lot of them and even some of the really big businesses say, look, we, we go through a broker for most of our complex covers. We go there for, you know, our indemnity and our liability, our industrial special risk and all of those things. However, for some of the smaller stuff like motor vehicle, workers' comp, travel insurance, it's just as easy to go direct. And what that suggests to us is that brokerages aren't necessarily losing clients overall, but rather they're getting a, a smaller share of their clients' total insurance spend. This then becomes a really important strategic question for brokerages. As a brokerage, you may decide that you don't want to deal in the smaller policies. That just needs to be then weighed up against the risk of do you want to then reduce the opportunity to have a more holistic understanding of clients and their total insurance arrangements. We see a similar picture when we compare age groups, and we see that age has quite a big impact on purchase channels, with only 31% of the 45-year-olds saying that they use a mix, compared to 60% of those under 45. Again, this younger group are a strong indicator of what we're going to see as mainstream behaviour as we go forward. So clearly, at the moment, younger people are saying, this is a real opportunity, I'm going to try different things and see how it works. So let's once again hear from our SMEs about what they have to say about their broker usage. And once again, hopefully you won't experience any technical glitches, but if you do, please hang on to after the video. All the main insurance, like the building, industrial special risk, and the farms, all with a broker. With the motor vehicles, we go direct to the insurance. In terms of the number of policies that we would put through our insurance broker, it would be somewhere around 70 to 80 percent of our policies. And we've traditionally gone direct more on the smaller insurance policies. We put about 80 percent of all our insurances to him. He doesn't do the travel insurance. I have done business with an insurance broker before, but the after-sales support wasn't as good as I thought it would be. With the motor vehicles, it just seems easier to go direct. Just set up online and click and change and put the value of your car, pay, it really is easy. With travel, it just happened to be that they offered a good travel solution, which was extremely cheap. Requoting at that point in time seems to be a fairly simple thing to do online these days. I guess my feeling about the brokers is it feels a bit old fashioned, but it kind of works. But somebody's going to disrupt it at some point. If I was looking for the ideal, I probably wouldn't use a broker because we're a technology business, we're passionate about technology. If I could go online and I could fill a form out, that's probably what I'd prefer to do. I like things online that are easy because often I get in here at 6am in the morning so things like that I'll do first thing. I, I am an online person, I usually do it um, you know, after work of course because in my business I'm walking around all the time. I'm pretty classically the small business owner that has to do all of the admin at night. The advantage of having an insurance broker is definitely their expertise in the insuring game. Personally, I find a lot of value in using a broker. I like the idea that you can go to an expert 
and they can help you get the right products. And for us it was important because yes, we are a craft brewery, but we make our beer in a very different way and we have a different set of risks. I could see it going where we would be able to put maybe the remainder of our insurance policies through a broker. If I was looking to shop around and get different types of cover, yeah. I would definitely consider going back to a broker. So now that we've reached the end of that section, let's just go through some things for brokers and brokerages to think about for this particular section. And the first is really to think about your client's total insurance portfolio, particularly for those small and medium businesses and younger business owners who are more likely to use a mix of channel. And think about, do you want to look after all of their insurance arrangements and how best to meet their entire insurance needs? As always, and we've said this over the years, demonstrating expertise is absolutely critical to provide reassurance and evidence that clients have the right cover so they've got less reason and less incentive to go off and try other ways of buying their insurance. Making it as easy as possible is absolutely critical. That could be about streamlining processes. It could be as simple as being available for the many SMEs like Gillian who we saw who doesn't run a nine to five business and who is doing her admin late at night are there ways that she could be communicating with her broker outside of standard business hours? Using simple online platforms for admin tasks is another way that you could think about to demonstrate, particularly for those who we know really enjoy the online way of interacting. And as always, client satisfaction is critical because we know that satisfied clients are less likely to be using a mix of channels. So before we move on to the next section, we've had some more questions come in and Anthony's going to take them through. Okay, take thanks through again. Them. And again, thank you for the questions coming through. Uh, I'll just pull that one out round. How can brokerages attract more of their clients' business? Mm, um, look, I think it really comes down to the quality of relationship. It's about having regular conversations with them. It's about ensuring that they're satisfied and providing evidence of the, the value that you're providing and the expertise that they're bringing that they wouldn't be getting. And I think it's also about streamlining processes so it's so easy for them that they come together because one of the questions that we've had in previous sessions is, well, um, asking about, you know, how they can be more engaged and really just being there for them at the times they want to be um, contacted is absolutely critical. Okay, thanks, Polly. Another one, um, what type of SMEs are you using a broker list? Um, look, good question. We are seeing this across the board. I'm, I would love to be able to answer this one that it's micro businesses. Um, look, it is micro businesses, but we're actually seeing it spread across small and medium sized businesses as well. The key distinguishing factor we find is that they are businesses who are dissatisfied with their brokers is probably one of the main characteristics. They also attitudinally are people who are comfortable online, who like to do their own research and like to feel in control of the process. Okay, and uh, another one about uh, broker users. What can brokerages do to prevent SMEs moving away? Look, I think it's um, a very similar answer to how can they keep their, their clients with them. I think it's about the quality of relationship. It's about staying in contact. It's about understanding their needs and making it as easy as possible. So it becomes a no-brainer for them that the easiest thing is to just stay with their broker. Okay. And last question um, on this uh, segment um, is a question that I might uh, be more equipped to answer. Uh, knowing that the percentage of using brokers have decreased, what is Vera doing to help brokers improve this trend? Um, I guess uh, from our perspective, being the intermediary brand, um, what we're trying to do is provide our brokers with uh, the tools and insights about today's SME. Uh, so the SME index is one of those seven year investments that we've made that continue to give us a different uh, angle as to how SMEs think and how they act. Um, we've created a number of videos um, over, the, over the course of the index, um, the benefits of using a broker, uh, what to do when, when there's a claim, um, risk management um, videos as well to help promote uh, the risk advice uh, aspect of a, of a broker. Um, we've also you know, looked at uh, improving processes, uh, one being claims, you know, a very important part of the insurance cycle. Um, we've got some new initiatives with a thing called One Touch Claims, um, which allows brokers to um, um, uh, settle claims in as little as 15 minutes um, you know, with, when all the relevant information has been supplied. 
So there's a number of things that we're doing that's going to help um, our broker become more relevant and of value to their clients. So uh, from that from that aspect, we just hope that you know, you know brokers using these sort of insights will continue to translate into connecting that with their clients. So right. I think that's all the questions for this segment. We'll move right. on to the next. Thanks, Anthony, and please keep the questions coming. We've got one more Q and A section coming up. Um, in a few slides time. So please send the questions through. We um, really enjoy the interaction and um, we'll answer those in a couple of minutes. But first of all, we want to move on to our final section, which talks about the role of referrals for businesses. Um, and we've linked that with peer advice because we know that advice from peers continues to grow in importance. So how can brokerages leverage this? So we have been asking for the last few years, we've been asking SMEs, well, where do you get advice about risks that your business faces? And the trend that we have been seeing over the year is that increasingly they are turning to their peers. They're less, there's been a decrease in likelihood to turn to sources who are what we call professional sources of insurance advice, whether that is an insurance broker, whether that's an insurance company or another professional with a degree of knowledge such as an accountant. Peers are people like friends, they're people who work in my industry, it's my family, it's people I know and we've seen a strong increasing trend for people who are seeking advice from this group of people, particularly amongst younger SMEs. Now, we've talked about this in previous years as being a real concern for the industry because it means that there is a lot of ill-informed advice out there, there's a risk of underinsurance, um, a risk of incorrect decisions being made. And to that end, it's obviously critical that the industry continue to communicate the value of having really expert trained professional insurance advice and to really communicate the value of that expert insurance advice that brokers deliver. However, we also started thinking about, well, given that there is such a strong liking for and affinity with word of mouth advice, can brokers use this preference for word of mouth advice for their own benefit? And in particular, if people are having conversations, what if broker people who use brokers are having conversation with their peers about, you know what, you should really speak to my broker, she's fantastic or he's fantastic. Can brokers really encourage those sorts of conversations to be happening more? So we asked a couple of new questions this year and really uncovered the fact that client referrals are a big untapped opportunity for many brokers. Firstly, we asked people, well, how likely are you to recommend your broker to someone? And really gratifying numbers here, we found that four out of five would be very willing to recommend their broker. We then said, well, has your broker ever asked you to refer them to anyone? And the numbers were almost reversed, where we had less than one in five said they've been asked to provide a referral. Now, these numbers aren't a surprise to us. We know that referrals are something that professional service businesses can leverage, but we also know from both local and international studies that not many professional services firms are actually referring them. And we know there's a statistic that 72% of businesses haven't referred their professional service provider simply because they haven't been asked. So there's a clear insight and opportunity here. Your clients and your, particularly your satisfied clients are willing to go out and recommend to their peers. We know that their peers are very willing to take that advice because we know that a huge majority of them when asked where would they look for a broker, they say, well, I'd ask someone's advice. So the opportunity is for brokerages to really leverage those people who are ambassadors for their business to go out and make referrals. So let's have a look at our SMEs and see how they're talking about this. We'll play our final video. Occasionally I might Google something. Google's my best friend. And then of course the advice of my peers. There's always a lot to be learned from other people. Word of mouth, it's very powerful. The craft brewing community is very collegiate. Everyone's very supportive of each other. They've started a small business, they haven't done it before. They've gone through all the teething problems and then you can pick up the phone and call someone and they're more than happy to help. I'm a member of the CEO Institute, we exchange information and ideas. I started an MBA at Macquarie University. Those places are good to get inspiration. 
there is the opportunity to link up with other directors and ask them for help. And sometimes, to be honest, you jump onto the Facebook pages about childcare. Called a fellow brewer, asked him what do they do for insurance. We use this broker, this is their name. I'd be more than happy to recommend our broker if that discussion came up. I would certainly have no hesitation in recommending them to anybody who asked. My brokers never asked me to recommend them to anybody else. If it came up, I would recommend them definitely. I would absolutely recommend our brokers to others, but he's never asked us to pass on his name or his card to fellow brewers or anyone else. So let's wrap up this section by looking at things for broker, brokers and brokerages to think about from this finding. The first thing is to consider developing formal referral strategies to ensure that you're making the most of the power of client recommendations and really using the fact that you have many satisfied clients out there to help grow your business. Ask your clients to recommend you. Gaining a referral sometimes can be just as simple as asking, and yet we know that many people don't ask their clients to refer them. It's also a great chance to have a conversation with satisfied clients about why they are satisfied and really leveraging that, because obviously satisfied clients are far more likely to recommend. Now, developing a referral strategy is all well and good, and that sounds good on paper, but you're possibly sitting there going, well, how do I do that? One of the tools that we've been working on at Vero is developing a workshop and some toolkits to help brokerages do exactly that. We're building a program called Building Effective Referral Strategies. That's going to be coming to you later this year, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully that will be something that will be really beneficial for brokerages to try and build referrals to your business. So before we conclude, Anthony, let's wrap up with some final questions. Okay, great. Some good questions coming through. So Kevin Cumming, um, what would make S <clears throat> sorry, what would make SMEs more likely to refer their broker? Look, I think that obviously satisfied clients are far more likely to refer. So having received great experience is something that's going to make them more likely to refer. But so often for them, there's a lot going on in their mind. They haven't even thought of it. So simply asking them to refer is often um, a really powerful way of doing it. As we mentioned in the things to consider, having a formalised strategy can really focus your brokerage on how to actually get that happening on a more formalised basis. So keep an eye out for some of those tools which are going to be heading your way later this year. Excellent. Okay, um, are younger SMEs more likely to seek peer advice than older ones? Yeah, absolutely. Overwhelmingly, um, they are embracing the power of their networks. They're, they're really trusting the advice of their peers. That's not to say that some of the older SMEs aren't doing it as well. I think you heard Lars, who runs one of the um, the big manufacturing business, you know, he, he has his own networks that he uses. But very much for the younger people, it's just, it's all, it's a given. They don't even think about it. Of course, that's the first place they go. Okay. And uh, one last one. So what percentage would consider their broker as a risk advisor and not purely someone who finds and places mm. insurance? Yeah, look, that's a great question. Um, we don't really have any quantitative data. We didn't ask that in the survey, so I can't give you a percentage answer for that. But I know anecdotally, having spoken to many SMEs face-to-face -face over the last few years, it's a real mix. Those people who have a really positive, engaged um, relationship with their broker who are talking with their broker on a fairly regular basis, who have the broker who understands their business, they are far more likely to say, absolutely, that person is an important advisor to my business. Those who really just purely see their broker as someone who finds and places insurance tend to be the people who have a more, a less engaged, more hands-off style of relationship with their broker. So I think it really comes down to the different relationships that are out there. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Home stretch now. Home stretch now. So, um, look, that's the end of the data for today. I think we're going to bring Anthony and I back up on screen any second now. So wait for it. Oh, I've got to press start my webcam. So, look, that's the end of the content for today, but there's plenty more information available. The best place to go for information about the index this year is vero.com.au after 3 p.m. today, so in 14 minutes' time, 
the report's going to be made available. Vero.com.au has a lot of the information plus some of the videos available, so please look out there. You'll also be hearing from us through the year. We've got content coming about the under 45s. We've got some content on claims and then some industry data, which will be coming later this year. And of course, the marketing team at Vero have pulled together a great series of tools that will hopefully really enable your brokerage to use these findings to really help grow your businesses. So there's plenty more to come. That's us, uh, almost all from us today, but I would just ask you, you will see now on your screens, there are two polls. One of them is asking, did you find the information useful? The other one's asking if you find that the webinar is a good way for us to share this information with you. We really appreciate your feedback, so please complete both of those polls. And thank you so much for your participation and your questions today. I'm going to hand over to Anthony Pagano for some final words. Okay, thank you, Kylie. Look, um, thank you, Kylie, and, and Brand Matters for that matter, um, and the team for producing uh, another quality SME Insurance Index report for, for on behalf of Bureau. Uh, to our broker partners, uh, most importantly, thank you uh, for your continued support in providing invaluable feedback and a clear demonstration that the work we're doing uh, with this index remains of, of relevance and of value to you and your clients. Uh, we've had an amazing response to this year's new format. Uh, with record numbers and look forward to sharing even more deep dive insights and insights throughout the course of the year. Uh, as Kyle mentioned, we'd encourage you to fill out the poll questions at the end of the webinar and don't forget to log out of the webinar by closing down the X button at the top of your screen so we've captured your full attendance and then you can qualify for your CBD training point. Thank you once again for taking uh, an hour out of your day. Uh, I know everyone's very busy. Uh, we wish you all the success and as always, if you have any further questions, Please do not hesitate to reach out to your local BDM. Until then, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.